So a couple months ago I mentioned that I might be heading back to Android due to the lower upfront cost of Android hardware. I also mentioned the reason why I was leaving Android in the first place. Over the last several months I've seen a lot of Android devices come and go. Mobile World Congress has really re reinvigorated my interest in the software platform because of the LG G5 in particular. I understand LG seems to have a very good reputation for a smooth user interface that doesn't seem to get bogged down and what I really like is the uh, modular quote-unquote friends that they're going to have the fact that this is going to be an open platform that third parties are going to be able to to do this to uh, develop hardware for it it'll be interesting to see where it goes um, my contract isn't up until the day after Christmas of this year so obviously we have a long time to go but I went ahead and um, took a look at some apps that could help me to accomplish what I'm currently doing on iOS with Android if I decide to switch back. Now I've looked at these, uh, some of these apps I've looked at in the past. Um, and again, I think the reason it left such a bad taste in my mouth had nothing to do with the programs themselves. It had everything to do with the fact that I was running a Sam, uh, running them on a Samsung Galaxy Note 2 that I was customizing out the wazoo. And in fact, some of those customizations, you'll, I'll, I'll show you in a little bit, some of those customizations are actually quite helpful. There are, some, there are a lot of things you can do on Android to improve accessibility for people with low vision. Um, note that I said low vision, not total blindness, because total blindness... Um, you know, screen reader. I mean, not no two screen access solutions are alike, but but this but the principle of a screen reader is pretty much the same across the board. Whereas with low vision, it's a lot more complicated because there are a myriad of eye conditions. Um, but the open nature of Android has allowed for a multitude of programs and some customization that you can't get on iOS. Um, My Samsung Galaxy Note 2 was specific to Verizon, and when I speci say specific to Verizon, <laughs> I'm talking about more than just branding. They locked down that phone in such a way where half of it was half of my internal storage was taken up by junk from Samsung. The only thing, excuse me, the only thing aside from the usual my Verizon mobile app excuse me, that allowed me to keep an eye on my data that I found useful was the preloaded Amazon apps. That's it. Everything else, NFL, don't need it. Um, I used S-Note quite a bit, but I didn't use any of the other S services. Um, you know, I, I, there are times when I do miss S-Note, but then I power up my Galaxy Note 2 and it takes literally five to ten minutes to finish going through everything. And it reminds me of why I switched out in the first place. That phone, when it's done going through its initial setup, the back is hot. So I'm thinking it's a processor problem. I bring this up because I've been playing with Android phones in the last two to three years since I got the Galaxy Note 2. And I've noticed that none of them have had the, that problem of being bogged down and sluggish. The only exception is, unfortunately, we're turning to Samsung again. Their latest hardware at Best Buy. I mean, it's smooth, but it's also a bit clunky. But it's not Samsung's fault this time around. It's the fact that they're re these are retail units running a retail experience, and they have this demo that seems to be on a timer, and that in itself bogs down the system quite a bit. Um, so that doesn't count. Uh, but, I, but I bring this up because I want it known that Android as a whole is not the problem. It's what Samsung and Verizon have done to the hardware that made it the problem. It also has to do with the fragmentation of the software. The latest Nexus that came out last summer, the fact that it um, is completely open, and I'm not talking just GSM, but also CDMA. Verizon is supposedly going to kill off the CDMA networks at the end of the year, I think. I know AT&T is going to do it. 
um, they're going to turn off their 2G network. I don't know if this is, I don't know if Verizon, Verizon's been talking about turning off their CDMA network for a long time, but I think this year they're finally going to do it. If that happens, and hypothetically speaking, if AT&T were to turn off their GSM network, and aside from frequency variances, all we had was LTE, then I think that um, it would be it would be pretty much the same way that our landlines run now. You can get any phone and put it on any, any network. So there are a lot of changes happening, including in the accessibility field, that I want to address. So I've already talked about why Android has left a bad taste in my mouth. Um, and again, it wasn't the software, it was the hardware. Oh, one thing I forgot to mention. This note was locked down to the point, now this is, this is going to sound wacky, okay, but there are a number of Android uh, transfer utilities available for the Macintosh. The note would not be recognized by my computer at all. I was told that this was not happening with other notes. It was apparently specific to Verizon's. The only way that I could get my stuff transferred over was using Keys Air. And it worked, but it was slow. So that I think in its I, that that was due to Verizon, but that still I when it's your first experience of something, you never forget it. So if I do switch back to Android, I'm going to be a lot more careful with the hardware I select. Um, if I can, I'm going to go with one of the Nexuses and just have uh, Verizon activate it. Um, but that's either near, near, neither here nor there. So let's take a look at some of the apps. This is something I use on iOS called Voice Dream Reader. Uh, Voice Dream Reader, I'm sorry. We'll get, we'll get to that in a moment. This is the third time I've done this video. Um, this is Vision Assist. Vision Assist is a video magnifier. It allows me to adjust the colors. You can see here we got white text and a black background. It allows me to adjust the magnification level, um, focusing, uh, flash. It allows me to pause the image and zoom around it, so say if you have a lot of text and you have to get the device really close to you, or if you're up, if you're up above your head and you're trying to get uh, information from a from a from a you know from a can on the top shelf, if you have voiceover on, it'll recognize those buttons. You can double tap the pause button and pause the image and bring the phone down to you and take a look. So that's really cool. Um, the equivalent on Android, there are two of them that I'm well that I'm uh, familiar with. One of them is the Ideal Magnifier, and the other is uh, Zoom Plus. Now, one of the side effects back when I first started with Android about getting one of these things to run was if I wanted to use Ideal Magnifier, I had to download Adobe Air. I'm pretty sure that's no longer the case, but. Even when I downloaded Adobe Air, it gave me the static rabbit ears kind of thing. And for those of you who grew up with rabbit ears, you'll know what I'm talking about. Um, in the last several years, though, these apps have come a long way. And I honestly think that they've matured enough to the point where I could use it on a day-to-day -day basis. Voice Dream Reader has been available on iOS for years and is um, not newly available on Android. I'm going to be upfront here. If anybody wishes to try it for Android, please purchase it and try it before reading the reviews. There are enough negative reviews to where the developer, and I'm not joking about this, he was very serious about this. Apparently, it's just a one man team that works on VoiceOver, uh, vo uh, VoiceStream. And unfortunately, the, net, the press, the, the reviews, with the app on Android are so bad that he has literally said I'm already losing enough money on this if this keeps up I'm not going to support Android anymore so if anybody wishes to try it for Android please try spend a week with it and don't under any circumstances unless you feel you know unless you feel you have a legit case you know don't don't hamper this guy. He's working really hard on this. And the other thing to understand about the Android platform in general, and this is a negative, there are positives and there are negatives. 
This is a negative regarding the Android platform. Due to the myriad of hardware choices and software configurations and skins, it is impossible to ensure flawless operation of any app on all hardware platforms for Android. So I, I respect this guy's work. He's been very courteous in, in his responses to me. I've used Voice Stream, both reader and writer, on my iPad Pro for my for my classes this term. Um, it's it's just been wonderful. So if anybody wants to try this for Android, I implore you to try before reading the reviews and give it enough time to where you can form a solid opinion without totally bashing the guy because I'm serious. He is like two steps away from giving up on Android and that's a shame because I'd like to see this app retain, uh, remain on the Android platform. So there's Voice Stream. If Voice Stream doesn't make it by the time my contract is up, um, another option that's available on Android for Bookshare books is called Go. Oh, I'm sorry, I, I completely go I goofed. Um, let's go back to Voiceover for Voice Stream for a moment. I completely forgot to mention what it does. Um, Voice Stream, what it does is it allows me to read Bookshare books. It scans web pages and reads them aloud to me. It is a an all-in-one reading solution for P for PDFs. Uh, it's just a wonderful solution. So Bookshare is what I mainly use it for. And on Android, another option for Bookshare is Go Read. This is developed by Benetech, the people behind Bookshare. They recently did an update. Excuse me. And I think that they've done a really interesting job. Um, I have still have to experiment with, a little, with it a little bit, but it is running on my Galaxy Note 2. Notice that I said running, not necessarily running well. But again, that's we go back to what I discussed about the hardware earlier. I think that on a newer device it wouldn't have this problem, especially now that a lot of devices are quad-core and some of them are octa-core and you got 4 gigs of RAM and whatnot. Another reading app on Android is called Darwin Reader. This one's a little bit more interesting. It allows you to download Bookshare books. It's integrated with Bookshare. It also has dual mode interfaces. It's got this graphical, what they call graphical interface that you're seeing in front of you now. The, it highlights the words in red as it reads them along. And I was able to go in and adjust the text and it's it's performing beautifully. Um, which, um, so that's one mode. The other mode is the uh, eyes free user interface which basically turns the entire screen into a D-pad for daisy navigation. Now go to go back to uh, go read for a second. Notice I said that it ran and it didn't run well, but it didn't necessarily run too well. The problem I'm having is because is that if I try to do a custom color scheme, it doesn't stick. Again, I think that might be a hardware problem. I want to I want to give it another shot on a more modern device. So we've got go read and we've got Darwin Reader for reading bookshare books on Android. We've also got the NLS Bard app. The NLS Bard app is running extremely well on Android. The only problem that I'm having is that it stutters whenever I close this, whenever I put the device to sleep. Other than that, and losing my place occasionally, which I was told that the, that was actually a problem on iOS as well. Um, so uh, take it for what it's worth. But overall, it runs really smooth, and they now have, I can now play my NLS and my Bookshare books, and I can enlarge print on my, um, on an Android device. If I ever lost my vision completely and needed to transfer over to screen reading, um, TapTapC is a cross-platform app. You can hover your image, hover your, um, camera over an image, take a picture, it'll run it through the database and it'll talk and it'll tell you what's in front of you. So I've used it and I think it's 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 just it's awesome. I love it. I've used it on both platforms. Actually I started it with I used it on Android first. But it's just a wonderful app. Now there are some things that Android has 
that iOS does not have. This is one of the major positives about Android. You can customize the user interface. In this case, what you have here is in, is in front of you is something called Claria Zoom. Claria Zoom is, an, is a home screen as well as a complete overhaul of the entire graphical user interface. Um, you, can have graph, you can have graphic icons, you can have text, um, there's a built-in magnifier, there's a built-in optical character recognition app, which means you can hold your phone over a piece of paper or printed document, take a picture, and it'll read it to you. Um, and that's all built into this app. It is truly phenomenal, I think, as far as a user experience is concerned. There's even an option in here called Claria Zoom Plus, and what that does is, by default it's a red circle, but you can customize it to whatever you want. I've got a black and white square. That's, that is present throughout the entire system, and what happens is you push that, and the app goes and scans what's on the screen, and it tells you, it lays out everything in a nice uh, row um, of big, big text, big font on YouTube or websites, a period before the text indicates a link, um, and you can use whatever speech engine you want. It's got speech supplement. So it's an all-in-one package that is not even possible on iOS because iOS does not allow you to customize the user interface to this extent. Another such example, uh, this one is nowhere near as robust as far as what it can do, but another example of a custom UI for Android, and I've used this one too, it's called Big Launcher. And again, really big icons, customizable. Um, I think this one is primarily intended for older, for the older demographic, whereas, and, it, and all it does is it customizes the UI. It doesn't offer you any of the additional features of Claria Zoom, which include the magnifier, the custom apps. Um, I think the big launcher, from what I remember, is just that, a launcher. It doesn't give you any custom um, apps. Um, all the apps remain the same, I think. It's been a while since I've touched that, but it is out there. But again, these are the kinds of things that you can do on Android that you cannot do on iOS. This is another cross-platform app that I actually just found. I haven't tried it yet, but the fact that it is cross-platform is going to be really interesting. This is Microsoft Lens, and that's it's similar to the OCR app built into Claria Zoom, in which you can uh, take a picture and it'll give you the information you need. The difference is you can import it into Microsoft Word, which is also cross-platform, or PowerPoint even. So that's really nice. On Prismo, on uh, iOS, to do the same thing, I've used an app called Prismo. Um, again, hover your phone over the picture, take the picture, it'll read it back to you. So, uh, there's also there's that one, and then there's also KNFB Reader, and KNFB Reader is cross-platform. This app is an interesting um, shows an interesting um, example of Android's marketing strategy. On iOS, you've got no choice but to pay outright for it, hundred bucks, and if you don't like it, you're you're out hundred bucks. Whereas with Android, you download it for free. You take 20, sc 20 scans, and if you like it, you can buy it outright. Um, I haven't seen that on iOS. I think it's something they should add. It would be really nice if they did. So these are the ways that Android and iOS are accessible in the um, software department. You've seen various solutions on how I can complete my daily tasks. There are... Um, advantages to Android and disadvantages on the software side. One of them being, again, because of the amount of software configurations and UI, um, you don't really know how screen reading technology is going to react, but because of something... I'll, what I'm going to do if I get another Android device is I'm just going to throw Claria Zoom on it immediately and just use that. Um, I'm not going to bother with any other UI. It's... I think the Claria Zoom is, is the one for me. Um, but because of the hardware variations, you never know how these experiences are going to turn out. But I think that if I were to go with an, with an LG or a Nexus 
or maybe a Huawei if they if they're available to use on Verizon if CDMA is killed off. Um, you know, just options to consider. That's one of the things I love about Android is all the options to consider. You can use the software, build whatever you want, including custom hardware. This is a screenless talking media player. It's called the Blaze ET. It's a company by it's it's a developed by a company called Hims which is the Human Information Management Service of Korea, but they've had an uh, office here in Texas for the last several years. Um, excuse me. Um, so the, the device runs a custom version of Google's Android operating system. Because of the open nature of Android, that opens up a slew of options for development for this thing. Um, a friend of mine put up an, uh, a video on this, I think about a year ago, that talked about the device and said that there was a custom, what they call an external app for this thing um, that you can download. It's a Skype client. So it's, it's going to be interesting. Android allows for that flexibility. Um, so I think that it's really, really great to have it, along with... Um, Humanware's Prodigy tablet. This is a 5-inch video magnification tablet that, again, runs on Android. The reason I found that out, they don't specifically state it, but when I was, um, I think I was shutting down, I, I saw the device a, minute, a couple years ago, and I was either shutting it down or doing something to it just to see how long it took to boot up, and when I ran the boot screen, the shutdown screen, it was immediately familiar to me. That was Android. So I spoke to this sales rep, and they said, um, they said, yes, it does run Android. So I went ahead and I emailed the folks at Humanware about the possible, because they've got two of them. They've got this Prodigy 5, and they've also got a bigger Prodigy 12, Prodigy 12 that I've used, that, that I've uh, highlighted in my other videos regarding the iPad Pro. That is a full-on Android tablet with custom software over the top. This, the Prodigy 5, is just the magnifier portion. It doesn't allow you to go out to the Google Play Store and get anything. But because they were able to do that, I got to thinking, and I emailed them, and I asked... What about taking the software that's on the Prodigy 5 and porting it to the Google Play Store? Because a lot of the a lot of the really nice um, high end and even so, even a lot of budget devices these days have at least a five inch screen, and at the very I'd say with the mid range to high end devices wouldn't it wouldn't have a problem running the software at all. So they responded to me. Uh, yesterday, and they said that it was a great suggestion. Um, they said that the hardware at the moment, this is what you see in front of you, is the Prodigy 5. They said it was a dedicated device and the software was custom built for it. So um, th the software cannot be exported yet. Um, they said that they would pra uh, pass it on to the project management team. They said that this would definitely be a good use of the Android platform. And again, because of the customization that Android brings, um, I can definitely see this happening. If Humanware were to port their Prodigy software over to Android and make it available in the Google Play Store, because this device alone is about a thousand bucks, okay? You could get a computer for a thousand bucks. If they could take the software and port it over and charge maybe a hundred bucks, which I, I, I know hundred for an app is a lot, but it's still a lot better than a thousand, and you're looking in this case at a very niche market. So um, a lot of people um, on iOS have already purchased the KNFB Reader, and again, the KNFB Reader on Android is available for free for a short time. You can get it and cut and scan 20 images, then you have to pay for it. But I think that Android has reached a point where I can utilize my magnification with Zoom Plus, my book reading with either Voice Stream or Go Read or Darwin. I could utilize or the NLS Bard app. 
I could utilize um, product identification if I ever needed to with tap tap C. I could utilize I could get a customized large print uh, home screen that you cannot get on iOS. Um, there's a cross-platform um, app that will allow me to turn scanned documents into Office documents. There's the uh, there's an OCR app cross-platform, again, KNFB Reader. I think that if I were to choose the right hardware, and to be honest, my preference would be, uh, like you see in this screenshot, one of the Nexus devices. Um, if I were to choose the right hardware... Um, I do think that Android has reached a point where the gap between the two has has been closed as far as what you can do with it. Now, what kind of user experience you're going to have? That's a whole other ballpark. I am not going back to Samsung. Mm -mm -mm. Nope. Nope, nope, nope. Not going back to Samsung. Um, I think I'll try, if I were to get another device, it would be a Nexus or an LG. Maybe an HTC. Maybe a Huawei. Maybe a ZTE. There are a lot of choices. But I do know one thing. I am not going back to Samsung. And I, and I do want my Android experience to be either stock or as lightweight as possible so it doesn't get bogged down over time. One of the thing before anybody asks, I'm not about to mod my device beyond what I've shown you here. I'm not about to root it, and the reason is because I depend on others for transportation. And the last thing I want is to get a rooted device to brick at the time when I need it most. So if I could do what I needed to do without rooting the device, I'm going to go for it. Um, but we'll see what happens when Christmas rolls around. Thank you for watching. Comments are welcome, and have a nice day.